Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR and Belkin Capital Research. What I'd like to do is go over technicals, how you can prepare, whether it's your daily trading program, your weekly, your monthly, or your swing trading, so people can understand how to structure their day or their trade for the following week or month if you are directional to the upside or directional to the downside or you, you're going to get sideways action in the market. First of all, I have the Fortune 500 uh, on a weekly chart, which is a three year. I didn't zoom back down here because I want to show you the larger range. We are in an up channel, major wider channel, up channel. We have a smaller range in this area between here and here. Since April of 2019, we are still in an uptrend. We had a couple of resets between those two channels. Think of this channel as the 100% up. This is the zero line and you have a 50% line in the sand. So that way you can recognize the trend in the overall market. Since we have this on a weekly, if you noticed whether you're going to call this week one for the change in trend to the upside, let's call this week one. That's the first candle, week two, week three, week four, week five and six. And we eventually broke the 3029 area 0.5 and the 3025 when we took off for the next three weeks in an uptrend. And we have a smaller, steeper cone channel, which is getting compressed up the top. On the weekly, we're trying to come out of a squeeze compression band to the upside. Since we have pushed higher, it does not mean we can continue higher. We may get to this up channel and fall through it, or we come back and retrace to the backside of this channel. It does not have to happen. All you have to do is look what the trend gives you in the market. What I want to do from the weekly chart, I want to go down to a little faster time frame. We're going to go to the daily, then I'm going to put it on a 30 minute chart for the swing for that week to show you how to read the overall technical. If you notice, the computer had given me two up channels and we have a 50% range. We've been grinding for the last two weeks in an uptrend, you know, grind, go sideways, grind, go sideways, grind, go sideways. And we just, we never had a reset. If you notice, there's a cone between this level here and this level here, which is getting narrower and narrower. If this eventually failed, there's nothing to support eventually to the backside of this channel, which is this green box. That means your advanced decline line, when it took off, it took the DMI plus, the momentum indicator in an uptrend from that candle. They tried to fail it here, did not happen, and eventually you get a push up and continue higher. So let's go from the daily to the faster time frame. We're going to go to a 30 minute, 10 days out. And the reason why I put this up, because I want to show you how to look at it in a simpler term. If you noticed, um, you never have seen this, and I'm overlapping the volume profile on the candles for one reason. What I would like to do is just go from day to day. There's a value area high, if you notice, on my candle. It's marked in a green dash line. This is the value area high. The value area low is marked in a like a pinkish, purplish color marked in a lower one and it's got a green label and the most interest where most the volume happened during that day or period of time is that purple midpoint so this is what you call value area high value area low and a pop since we gapped up on friday from the prior high which was 3102 when we came back to retest it in the morning, we only retested 3,103 and a quarter. We never fell through the prior high. The momentum stayed bullish 
on a grind high and we eventually broke the 3,111.5, which was the overnight high. I used the price action in the Asian European market. This is the action in the overnight action, which I call it, or the prior day. This is the daily when it happens in the United States. It's that black shadow in here where the market opens up from 930 till 415 in the afternoon on the futures. So when we pushed up, we came back down in the overnight, never retested the prior high, which leaves us a small gap in the area. That means if we're going to retest it and fall through it, we can eventually fall to the lower channel. And usually what the indicators I look for for extension, I look for the prior high and low for the day, and I draw my extensions to the upside or downside according to the momentum in the market. So first of all, we have a gap up, which is more than 10 points in an uptrend. So go with all gaps that don't fail. That means the direction is going to stay bullish. That's the first scenario. Large gaps do not have to fill at all during that period of time. They can be revisited in the future. So you, you have to understand that. Go with all gap because it's very hard when you have a 10-point gap up in order to fade it back to fill the gap or the prior day close. Most people are looking for it. Sometimes it doesn't happen because the momentum is to the upside. Number four, gaps usually are very tricky for an average trader in the market. When you are first learning, learn what the technicals are giving you, the breadth of the market, the AD, the ticks. Are they pushing them down? Are they pushing them up? Are they keeping the momentum up in order to continue higher? If there is no fade in the afternoon and the gap holds, that means they, the odds of an afternoon rally is more likely than a sell-off. Unless they sell it, you fill the gap, you stay in the low and you cannot fall, that means they're going to rally it. If you fall through the prior close and you fill the gap, eventually it's a sell-off. So you have to look at the technicals. And what I want to do is mark another gap in here. That was the prior high. And this is the... Uh, uh, yesterday's action, which is 3,103 and a quarter. So this is a marked area where we have to mark it with a box, extend it to the right. If we fall through it during the week, we have to understand we're going to look for the other side where the pucks are. What I want to do is extend it to the right, make sure I did it correctly, and we're going to mark it in a quarter. That's a quarter. And instead of just two days out, we're going to go six days out or seven days in order to get to understand there's one in the future to keep an eye on this area. So we keep an eye on this area to see if we eventually fill the cap and retest the prior high. If we fall through it, we look for the first value area high and the POC to fill. If you notice in the prior days, I'm going to zoom in in here just to show you how to look at it. Once again, value area high, value area low, and a POC. If we notice that this is the first area high, and this is the POC, which is verging control point. If you noticed, we have marked, the computer have marked 3,092.5. That's my ADX DMI momentum. When we pushed higher, we continued to the upside. So this is a verging control point which we will visit in the future, but does not have to happen that instant. So I hope this was helpful looking at the technicals. And if we look at it in the past one, two, three, four, five, six, we had range bound and eventually we broke to. Those pucks are very important on the reset. We have this one here and we have this one here that's never been revisited and one down here. So we have two virgin pucks that have never been revisited. So keep an eye on the technicals to give you direction in the market. If you notice my label, it does long. That means our target when we're pushing up, which we did never revisit the 3,000, 
102 when we pushed above the 3007, 3008, 3108, I'm sorry. The target on my computer had given me an extension, one standard deviation, because the average true range is 22 and a quarter points in the Fortune 500 company. It gave me where the extensions we can go to on the way up to trade to the upside. If the momentum was low, it'll tell me short and it'll give me a target to the downside. That long, all it is is a midpoint where the average true range is. It flips from long to short in the direction of the move. Our value areas are marked, my R1, R2, and as long as we are above 3,113.75, we are bullish. I know I spent a little bit of time on the ES, but let's take a look at the overall four indicators together, and I'll break some other instruments and we'll go from there, we'll keep it short, okay? Let's take a look at the SDX plus NDX plus RUT, the Russell, plus the dollar sign DJI, which is the Dow Joe 30. So if I put the combination on all of them and I go to the weekly chart, I just want to do it that way so you can understand everybody that we are looking still in an uptrend. We are looking to continue higher, but if we fail through those two cones, we can eventually fall through. So trade what you see, not what you think. And the computer, if you notice, have given me a bullish indication on the long-term weekly. If we're above the 38,774, let's call it, we are bullish. But the real one is up here. You see it, 39,452. We don't want to fall through it on the long term. Let's go now to the NQ. This is the weekly. Similar situation, it's in an up cone. If I go from the weekly to the daily, we're going to see the profile on it, which I didn't turn off. Let's just turn off the R1, R2, R3, support one, support two, support three, so we don't end up having issues in the technicality, and I'm just going to mark them off so we don't keep them in our charts so we can make the charts a little simpler. Um, we should be okay by now. Apply it, and it's all gone. Toss is taking its own little spare time, and here we go. That's the NASDAQ. Let's just zoom in. Remember, we are in that upper channel on a steeper incline cone. Once eventually we reach the higher high, if we cannot do it and fall back through the old channel, which is this one here, and the prior high, it can come back down. So trade what you see. Let's take a look at the YM. YM is in a similar situation. You can see it's in an uptrend. What we can do, we can connect those dots to give you the upper cone so you can understand there's cones, there's channels, up channels, down channels, side channels, support and resistance. And this is why I use them when I am trading, it gives me an idea in relationship if the pushes are higher or lower when I'm drawing my channels. So if you notice the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has broken through this minor channel and I usually make them a little bit yellow. The ones that are inside are yellow for me or blue and the wider ones are burnt orange and I usually keep them for the wider ranges in the charts. This is why I use wider channels, orange colors, narrower channels, or smaller dots that are drawn manually in the computer. Usually the computer will give me direction on a trend, and the computer gives me the break out of those channels when you have to, let's say this is the shoulder, this is the head, this is the cup, head and shoulder, and eventually broke out in continuation. So remember to use those. Let's take a look at the RTY the small cap. Small cap has been having a little difficulty in the side market. I'll go to the weekly to show you where we're at in relationship to the long term. On the weekly, we, you know, we've been range bound trying to clear the 1635, 1625. And every time we try to go up there, have not been able to be successful. And I do have a small down channel here. You notice that on the cone, and I do have one up here. This is the major one. It's in a symmetrical triangle, compressing in a squeeze. It's been going from June till November on the weekly chart, having came out to the upside or the downside. 
keep an eye on the small cap, I call it the canary in the coal mine, which can give us a little bit more higher trend. Remember, it may be boring for a lot of people, but I want you to understand, I'm a technical trader. You got to learn my vocabulary over time in order to help you how to trade direction. Let's take a look at the daily. And here it is. You can see the zigzag pattern. If I see that, that come, we're going to put a little line in here on the daily. We're going to connect this one with this dot here, the last candle that fell through. If we're going to fall through it, we have to keep an eye on it for the reset on the back side of that channel. Edit. And we're going to make a smaller channel. We make it yellow, and we'll keep it that way on that one. That should be sufficient enough to keep an eye on the other side. So that's the Russell. Let's take a look at AAPL. The momentum's still up. Everybody's looking, you know, to short it, and it hasn't worked out. We do have these two gaps. Eventually, they will refill. Watch the turn. This is the reset to go higher. That yellow candle, my advanced decline line, my RSI, my ADX DMI, the strength is starting to neutralize, go flat line instead of continuation higher. Look anytime, you know, for possibility of a pushback. That's Apple. Amazon has been a little bit more weaker. If you notice, Nike took their, they want to do their own distribution. They don't want to use Amazon. And a couple of news came out. Instead of continuation above the 1800, 1825, if you notice it here, this is my advanced decline line when the momentum got pushed higher. We broke up, retested the same distance from here to here. We traveled the same distance here, and eventually we broke up. We came back, retested that 60 day, which is no longer valid, and we went back down, retested, went up, came back down, went up, came back down on the earning report, pushed up, everything got sold. And what did we test on Friday, the 61.8? And we popped above the 39 to the 43. And where did we close around the 39.50? This has to act as support. Or eventually, you'll fill the gap to the downside or it has, unless it turns. That's Amazon. Let's take a look at Facebook. I'll do gold and silver at the end. Facebook is, you know, sideways trying to, you know, make that rounded bottom. If it's going to clear the 198, 200, it's going to be a tell. If not, look for the other side. Um, Google L. Google L has been continuing on an upscale. If you notice this channel that I drew is no longer valid, we're going to remove them. We're going to fix those channels from here because they're no longer valid. Remove drawing. Uh, what we can do is grab this 1029 to this green box. This is the advanced decline line. That green box, when the ADX took the DMI plus back up, it continued on a Bullish momentum in your RSI went above 50. It's continuing higher. We do have this slope, but what I want to do is grab that 1163.14 and connect it to this area here to keep an eye on this smaller channel inside that cone for continuation or it's going to act as resistance. We edit the channel. We make it into a small little one. And what we can do is just go yellow like before so you guys see what I'm doing. And this is how you draw a channel. This one, I'm not going to keep it there. It's a, too far away. We can look at it later. Or what we can do is grab this candle here. With this one here, it'll give us a narrower one, which these two are parallel, but you have a midpoint in this range. And I do have one here. I did not connect this one to this high. I want to leave it alone because we're still above the 1268, 1296. As long as we don't fall through the 1300, still bullish if you fall through it look for the back side of the 38.50 and the 61.8 feb let's take a look at netflix please remember the christmas is around the corner unless you know politically and flx something comes up you know between china u.s tariff uh political issues you know impeachment and all that stuff that's going on eurozone uh, eu um, these are the things and events, you know, in the Middle East that will cause us problem. Netflix has been trying to push above the 296.81.305. Keep an eye on it. If we eventually come back through and break this channel, the target will be the prior resistance and eventually partially to the, you know, the 116 and the 200 SMA on the daily. Let's take a look at Tesla because, you know, everybody's trying to kick uh, Netflix. 
Netflix down because, you know, Disneyland, the most happiest place on earth, had good earning report. They pushed it higher. They're doing good production in their movies and stuff. But remember, Netflix have their own as well production. You know, people do tend, you know, to shift money around different instruments. But keep an eye on it. It may be the U-turn for it. Um, Tesla is in an uptrend. Everybody's trying to short it. We did get that earning gap. It did a good delivery. Since, you know, the 268 area, it has not looked back and continued high. It did that like uh, push up, come back, reset to the 309 and eventually pushed above the 340. This is my line in the sand, 344. If it falls through that area, that 350, 344 area, it's eventually going to come back, retest the 18, the 308 and fall to the 50% fib and eventually fill the gap. But if this is going to continuation, my real target, I put in a couple of days ago to an analyst had asked me on Twitter, what do you think of Tesla? Where are the levels? You know, I had mentioned all these and I have a 372, 368 to the upside. If we cannot clear 362 and you turn and fall back, be careful of the 250 area because it can be the 350. I said 250, the 350 area and 344. You can fall back through that 341 area, 340 and come back down to this area. So watch what Tesla gives you. Let's go to GC, which is the gold oops, slash GC. Um, remember in this area, I've had always told everybody here at the 1262 area, go for along. This is my green box ADX DMI crossing, taking the DMI plus continuation to the upside. We rallied when eventually the DMI plus fell through here. First one, when it fell here, it wasn't that much of a uh, I was worried about the 1508 area. It continued, and I said this was my target, 1508. They tried to go back to the 24 twice, 25 area, couldn't get it up there, and eventually we fell through the backside of the channel. Remember, this looks like a flag in a down channel going sideways. That 1442 area, 1443, on a couple of days ago on, uh, on gold, we tested this area at... Uh, 1446.2. If this is going to hold and we eventually clear the 23.6 Feb and go higher, we can eventually break out. This channel is no longer valid. I got to move that out of the way. Remove drawing. So, what we want to do is keep an eye on the longer time frame, wider channel. You do have this candle here, which is the low to this candle here. This is way out at the low. You can see this. This is from way far down here. This is far away to go. This is the consolidation of the prior breakout. Push up, continue coming back. We retested almost this area. And let's see if it's going to continue back up or fall through. If this falls through, my remember I had this oval here and here. I said if it pushes, this is the target. If it pushes down, this is the target. And what I did, I moved it in the prior video, this oval to this area to keep an eye on it. What did it do? retested this area and popped back up. If it cannot clear 1478 area, this is still can continue back down to this area before you can stop positioning a trade in gold because gold, this was the rounded bottom consolidation breakout. So these are usually re, sometimes are retested on resets. So I'm not bullish. I'm not bearish. Gold is still sideways until they make a decision above the 78, 88 and clear to the top side, falls through backside. So let's take a look at CL. And CL, if you noticed, it's in the same situation as before, side action between the 53, 54 area and the 58. If Oil is going to break out, which I would love to see that prior cone to the upside. And everybody goes, where did he get this channel from? Um, I have no, what just happened? Where did this come from? Remove drawing. Whoa, I don't know where this one came from. So this is the, this is a very important area when the Saudis, you know, they got uh, attacked and they hit their oil uh, mining field. You know, it caused that overnight reaction to the upside, what did they do? They sold it, consolidated in the prior area, fell down, trying to come back to this area. If we clear this area, our up target is here. 
if we fold through this one, our area is down here. So remember, I like oil to the upside. I'm bullish technically, but if things do change, trade the direction of the move. Don't be biased to one side because you can get caught. And let's go back one more time to the Fortune 500 companies. And this is the, the daily chart. We're just going to zoom in here. But we do have a decline in the volume on this last push up. The volume have died out. We do have this cone. Keep an eye on the reset. This is a green box. This is the first gap. There's a little gap up here, which I marked. You can see it right here. And, you know, I should do it a little wider. This one at a properties. Let's just push it a couple more days out. Here we go. So it goes further out. So we're going to keep an eye on refilling those gaps if it falls through in the backside of the channel. If this is continuation to the upper channel, then that would look be that would be around the 3055 area. You can see that channel here, and most of them do meet in this area. If we fall through here, look for the backside. So don't be biased to one side. Hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you on our Discord chat room which i do help people to understand how to read charts and technicals it's an educational room and if anybody needs asset modeling and stuff we are a technical company we have our own algorithm and we are able to help institutions as well as individual private investors that want a robotic trading platform without being biased to one side the machines do the trading i call them the terminators so take care, everyone. Look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, do subscribe and over and out.